Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance and the select board members participating in the meeting. This is Larry Jarvis, chair. Pia Laterno. Paulico. And this is, Dean's not on yet? No. Okay. Uh, so, start the meeting. Uh, we have to ask if there's any change needed made to the agenda. And I think BJ had mentioned something. I don't know what it was. Yes, it's um, Sean and I had discussed future needs for meetings by Zoom for select board, the DRB, and any other um, parties of the town. Sean can give more light onto that when it comes up, but it does entail buying some equipment. Okay, so do you want to add to the agenda, discuss, agenda discussion of uh, future Zoom meetings for, yes. for Innisburg Public Board? So do I have a motion and a second? Move. Second. Polly made a motion and Pierre seconded to add a discussion on the Zoom meetings. Uh, any more discussion? If I have none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Keo Eterno says aye. All those opposed say nay. Okay, uh, is there any other, uh, I should read, do you all have the agenda in front of you? Yes. Are there anything else needed to be changed on the agenda? Billy Joe, did we need to add uh, any Bridge 50 discussion, the two Bridge 50s? I think I added it at the last minute to Larry's. Okay, in light of the letter that was received today. Right. Oh, I forgot that one, I think. So you should add that, Larry. Add, okay. I only did the one up by Horseshoe Circle. Yeah, there's that's the confusing thing there. There's the two we're talking about the both bridge fifties. <laughs> okay, so there needs to be on the six fifteen line item there with Joey or the bridge on East Bakersfield, which is bridge fifty, also needs to have added bridge fifty over the falls discussion. Uh, so I need a motion. Peel Eternal moves. Do I have a second? Do I have Polly? Is she muted? Is she froze? Did, did we lose froze. her? I think she's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. Here we are. <laughs> I'm back. Lost ya? Yeah. Yeah. Did you need a vote? Yeah. Did you hear the motion? Uh, that you wanted to add bridge 50 discussion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, uh, over the falls. Yeah. And Pierre, so Pierre made a motion and I need a second. I'll second. Okay, so Pierre made a motion and Polly seconded to add uh, additional bridge 50 discussion. Uh, any more discussion? If having none, all those in favor, add not on agenda, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Pierre says aye. All those opposed say nay. All right. I think that's it for nobody else has anything else to add to the agenda. Okay. So there, there's, some, there's some updates, but it's nothing we have to make decisions on. Okay, we're going to have to bypass the minutes because I was not at the last meeting. We don't have a quorum for the minutes yet. Until if Dean shows up, we will readdress that. So uh, next on the agenda is Cindy Weed, Historical Society President, Innsburg Center Church, Bell for Historical Society. Okay, so did you folks receive the picture of the bell? Did you want me to share it right now, Cindy? Yeah, you may as well, but okay. I'll, I'll just talk anyway. Okay. So 
there's a an 1884 bell that was given to the church up in the Enosburg Center, you know, years ago. And apparently, of course, the building is in ill repair. And at some point, the steeple, there's a picture, one of them. That's the cradle. Are you all looking at that? That's the cradle that holds the bell. Yeah. And the steeple has come down, and Daryl has that. It would be available to go around the bell. The bell is beautiful. The next picture is a picture of the bell. It's really a nice bell. And there's an inscription on there. And apparently a couple of years ago, it was given to the Historical Society. I didn't know that. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure what that is. Um, so we don't have room at the museum for a steeple and a really nice bell. I did look up bells on the internet. Similar bells are in the three to $5,000 range. I mean, I think they're valuable think somebody would want to buy it if we couldn't deal with it um, but I don't think that's what we want to do I, it'd be really nice apparently there was a conversation already about this with the select board before you folks uh, about maybe putting it at the emergency services building and now that you're going to get possibly get the armory that might be a nice thing for the front yard we just we would like to keep it in town as the historical society. It's really attractive. Um, it's all intact. And maybe you would, you'd probably have to build some kind of foundation for the, the steeple or depending on how you wanted to, to house it, if you'd be willing to do that. Um, Daryl spent $350 to get it, to save it and get it over to his house. So it'd be nice to pay him back for that. And I don't think it would take much for a, a foundation. I'm sure it would cost something. It's just an idea. I'm really looking for ideas as much as throwing out ideas. It Maybe if we could put it somewhere, the Historical Society could get uh, one of those historic markers that talks about it. And it would be just another attractive thing for Enosburg for tourism and, and just to preserve our history. So any questions or thoughts? I mean, I don't expect answers or even even too many thoughts, but. Are the Pearlies looking to get rid of it out of their barn right now? Do you need a place to have it moved to? Yeah, uh, it's up to Carolyn Pearlie's barn. I went up and looked at it and took the pictures. Did you see the pictures of the bell? Did it come through? It's kind of a, uh, a greenish blue. I don't know if it's because it's oxidized or what. It's very attractive bell. Um, so yeah, she, you know, she would like to see it out of her barn. It's about three foot in diameter and the cradle is probably four, four and a half, five feet. And the, the steeple, I'm going to ask Daryl to send a picture over so you folks can see that. But it could be a really nice historic project that we could all come together on and do what we need to do. Maybe, maybe we could even get some grant money to put a little foundation under it to keep it safe. But any other questions? I, the, I'm just learning about it now. That's why I went up and looked at it. And somebody, Debbie, our secretary, sent us minutes sent me minutes so I would see that it has been discussed before a couple of years ago with a select board. There was no action taken and I'm not looking for action tonight, but I guess a little bit of feedback. I think it would look great in the front yard of the armory. And that was actually just a, an idea that came up in conversation. Yeah, as, as, far, uh, as far as putting it there, uh, that's why I think it was a good question for BJ how soon the Prairies want to get it out because that looks like it's going to be at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. Before anything happens there, so it'll be next year before you, yeah. if there's snow on it. I don't think it's, be, it's clearly been in their garage for some time. And I think it's more about finding a home or if right. we wanted it. Um, which I guess we were given it already. So now it's, you know, our problem to, to take care of it. But I think if there was a, 
a, even a loose plan that we, we did want it and we are working to, I mean, maybe we could find a place for it until we did something with it too, possibly. We don't have the space. That's why I'm reaching out to, to the municipalities, uh, bodies. But I would like to see it preserved. And I guess I just want to know if you folks would like to preserve it or should they put it on the auction block? My personal opinion is I think it would be great at the armory if, if we could find a place to house it and if it's an idea somebody could get behind, I think it'd be great to have a town signs on it. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I agree. I, it would, I think it would, there's plenty of room right there. I think that to situate it very nicely. It could really be a landmark to, you know, in a lot of ways and add to, I mean, we just put the fence up in the park and Looks great. You know, we're yeah. Doesn't it look great? We're improving the look of the town, and the town has a lot of neat things about it. I'm not sure what's going to happen to the church. It'd be kind of neat if it, there could be a memorial up there. That's another option. I'm not even sure about the land or if they're going to take it down. I I couldn't really get into that. I tried. Um, it seems confusing up there, but. At least we have part of it that we can preserve. Somebody even suggested Lincoln Park. I don't know whether next to the bandstand on, say, on the right side between the, right in the middle there. I don't know. It's it's quite a nice looking bell. Did you say the park, Cindy? Yeah, somebody suggested Lincoln Park in a conversation uh, last week. And I never, I think it was the initiative that said, well, what about on Lincoln Park? So I'm gonna to talk to the trustees also to just let them know that there's this opportunity. And if people are interested, you know, we'll revisit it or we can get, well, we don't have a building possibly if we do the armory, but we could maybe get a, we still are gonna need a quote on the foundation. Or does the village and, or town have the ability to put in a little foundation. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, that's something that uh, I brought up before. On uh, uh, we have the the fund there for uh, uh, conservation fund, and I almost think that we should have some language change in that fund to include things like this because we had the statue. You know, we took it out of the taxpayers. The money's in a, it's sitting there in a fund already, and it's hardly getting used. And these are opportunities. I think that we could, we could uh, mm. really explore that, those funds that are already sitting there. Is it for land conservation? Yeah, there's specific language for it, and you would have to change some language. But I, don't, I think it's doable. I think the, Sarah Downs is probably the chair of the conservation something that should be brought up because this is a second opportunity we had a doughboy before and now this uh, so there's right. different, different avenues instead of taking it out of the taxpayers again when we already have the fund money sitting mm -hmm. sitting idle so okay but, well i don't want to keep you any further any other questions or what would you like to see me do next well yeah. uh, for us, I mean, you know, the number one spot probably would be the armory, and, and that would have to be a, a wait, a waiting process, and um, we definitely could do some planning. Okay. And if we have to come up with some construction figures, or in the meantime, maybe they can change the language in the, for the conservation fund, so, you know, maybe we can get five or $10,000 to, to do something for a foundation. Right. I don't. I don't think it would be even possible. Yeah, we got some out Somebody else is on. Sorry, sorry, Area. Sandy. Area. Okay, nothing. I just said there was some noise. Um, so there. Do you need to discuss with the board if there is interest, so I can tell Carolyn that there's interest, and hopefully, in the spring. We can get it out of there. Does that seem? I guess I, I think that I think that seems valid. It's just where is the big question. Okay. You know, 
particularly with the armory and whatever, but I, I would say that we're interested. Okay. What, what do you think, That's Dean and, and Pierre? Dean's joined us. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I just barely stepped in, so I'm not sure what we're talking about, so I won't comment yet. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bell. We have the Enosburg, the Historical Society has the Enosburg Center bell in the oh, nice. carriage that holds the bell and the steeple. And if I don't, I hate to see it trashed. Um, we don't have room at the museum, although I would like it over by the museum, but it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. So we were, there was some talk about putting it at the armory. If we get the armory, you know, put it out front and use it as a real landmark. It's beautiful. The bell is beautiful. And I'm sure we could make the rest of it nice. And I don't think it would cost a lot of money, you know, with the, with the staff, with the town and, and maybe some help from the village. I think we can do it pretty inexpensively, but we can find out more about that. Or maybe we can get some money, grants or something. I would be willing to work on that. So it was just whether or not there's some interest without a commitment, I guess. It's a fine line. I feel like it would definitely be worth pursuing. Yeah. Okay. I agree. It sounds like, did Pierre say anything? Good. Pardon? Yeah, I agree also. Okay, so, it, all right, well, that's fantastic. I will get some pictures of the steeple and I will talk to Carolyn and as you move forward, we can revisit this situation. Sounds great. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. I don't know how to get myself <laughs> off here. Can Thanks, you disconnect Cindy. me? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I guess I'll just shut off. <laughs> BJ, can you hear me? I can. Uh, I wonder if we could put Sarah on our next month's agenda because we should we should look into this fund, being able to see if we can change it around to use it for situations like this. Okay. Then it'd be a little easier to make some decisions financially. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, we are now next on agenda. Uh, we'll have the minutes after if we have time after Joy, but we'll, we'll have Joy now. And we've got several things to talk about there. Uh, first on, on the agenda with Joy, uh, he discussed a little bit, and uh, I think Dean brought it up earlier about uh, locking in fuel prices. Uh, Joy wants to fill fill the rest of the board in what we discussed with tonight. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> chat with Dan Carswell a couple weeks ago and, uh, he got back to me. Actually, I got back to him today, um, with some, with some pricing. Of course, it's a moving target, the uh, price of fuel is going up now. So, um, there's two ways of doing it. Probably Dean's familiar with it because I think they've done kind of the same thing here earlier on. Um, you could lock in and any particular day, like today, for instance, is like a, it's like a dollar 29 a gallon. Um, he's expecting that by the midday tomorrow or so, it's probably going to be up a dollar 34, 35, somewhere in that range. Uh, if you lock in with the daily price like that, what you would have to do is to write them a check. So say you locked in today, today was $1.299. You lock in at that price, pay for a year's worth, which we average around 20,000 gallons a year. So you'd have to write them a check for that amount. And then he would actually buy that fuel and store it, so to speak, on, on paper. And then we would, you know, use the, use the, the stored amount as time went on. If we do what to call on the market price right now, um, you wouldn't have to write them a, a check for the full amount and do like monthly payments. And the lock-in price right now for that is $1.49.9. That was today. Tomorrow might be a little different, but it shouldn't change too much. Um, 
So I'm thinking that uh, it's probably a good thing we hadn't done it before because we've actually been saving some money because price of fuel has been like a dollar twenty nine, dollar thirty nine here for a while for a few weeks, but it's going up. So at some point in time, when it reaches that dollar and a half mark, which may be in a couple of days, not sure. Seems like that would be the right time to to lock in, depending upon what the price was. Maybe at that point, when it's at a dollar and a half, maybe the lock in price will be a dollar sixty. I don't know how that does work. It's the first time I've ever had any experience with it. So maybe Dean can offer some some ideas, or Larry too. I'm sure you guys have probably done the same thing. You guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I can hear yeah. you. Right. Can you see me? <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, of course, we buy a lot of tractor trailer bulk loads there. I mean, uh, we haven't done locked in prices like this in a long time because they haven't been this favorable. Um, but I, I, I'd like to lock it in the future and paying monthly rather than paying everything up front. And I, I agree with you that I heard. Uh, on the news this morning, uh, the price of fuel is really going to be going up uh, quickly now in the next few weeks. Yeah. So sure, people are getting back into work and back I, in the swing. The consumption is going to be higher, so yeah, I'm sure that's why things are going to go back up. I just don't know if this timing's right. It kind of seems like it is, but I don't, I don't have the experience with it. So. Yeah, I, I agree with Larry. That I, think, I, think I mean. Stop. By by an on on the futures like that, that you're not really going to lose from it's what it is. It's definitely going up. So and you're still paying for it monthly yeah. rather than paying all up front. So it, just ensuring your price basically. Yeah. And you uh, when you did your budget, your your uh, beginning of the year, Chris, there's a lot of different situations at that time. Yeah. This must this number must be quite a bit lower than what you had put in, or uh, well, that fuel is all paid for out of the equipment fund. The equipment, uh, what I want to say, the it's called lease. Um, yeah, well, I item. report out, but it's uh, it's for lease and repairs and fuel. It's the the hundred fifty thousand dollar budget item. So um, I don't ever. We kind of work right. that same number every year and it covers it. So I've never really figured out how much money we need to have specifically for fuel. So that that equipment uh, fund, that equipment uh, expense line item in the town report, that covers repairs, it covers fuel, um, you know, whatever, parts and anything like that. So, yeah. Uh, and it is, it's not based on gallons, it's based on the year before consumption, right? Right, yep, yep. It's just a number we know we can operate within for the year and uh, I haven't ever figured out anything specific for fuel. So like I, I explained to him too, I said, well, technically I guess as the board, you probably wouldn't have the authority to pay for more fuel than to the end of December because that's what your budget, that's what the people voted on for that line item in the budget is for expenses till December 31st. They don't go out, you know, 12 months from this time out. But possibly as a board, you could uh, make that decision. I don't know if you could or not. Seems how your, your budgeted numbers are till the end of December. How, to go how, long, how many months was he willing to go out? Um, I'm not sure. I guess I would have to double check on that. I think he, the way he did explain when I first talked to him, the further out you go, the higher the price goes up because they they know it's going to go up. So the further out you go, the higher it goes. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm in favor of doing that at least to the end of the year. But yeah, if he wants to go a few months after that, we should entertain that thought. But I don't want to lose the uh, wait till our next meeting to make a decision there because then the price is probably going to go up quite a bit. Right. 
I'm good with locking in. Yeah, me too. We know it's going to be more than a dollar, dollar fifty cents a gallon here when things get back to normal. Oh, for sure. Such a thing. For sure. Is that something we need to move on, or can we just direct him to go do that? You can direct him. Directed. Yeah, we give you permission to do do as well as you can, <laughs> as far out as you can. I think, but he'll probably say December because. It, probably gonna get be a tight market after that yeah okay six, so. um okay so if it's anything after the end of the year do you want if, me to get back to you i mean if you can get that price yeah uh, if it's around dollar fifty i mean if we can get it for a year that'd be great but i don't know yeah, right I don't yeah. know how, far, how he'll go it'll yeah. probably at some point it'll probably change Pretty significantly, and should just ask uh, what, what what is that point? How far yeah. out can we? Go? Yeah. Okay. I'll ask. And at that point, I think maybe if you just call each of us select board members up and ask us, you know, if you want to extend it at this price for a little longer and all. Yeah. So, okay. I think I think as long as it's close to that dollar fifty, I, you know, I wouldn't don't don't need to call me. Just do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Think, yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. Same, same thing with me. Do the same. Okay. I'll uh, I'll check into it. Lock in the best we can. Yep. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Joey. Yep. So, so the next thing on the Joey's line item would be, well, either one of the bridge fifties, whichever one you want to. Uh, yeah, we were gonna, we're gonna go in executive session after the bridges. I think I got a thing prompt me to, to go in executive session, but all right, same. So we, did Enough you get the did you talk to the guys? Because unless you talk to them, we don't need to go in. Uh, I did to, to Lucius. Uh, Gary was leaving, I didn't get a chance to talk with him much, or and I definitely didn't talk with Cecil. So I guess we'll have to put it off till next time. But Gary, Gary said he had wrote something down and gave it to you, Billy Joe, or something. Uh, nope, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can make that's it. That's all up. he said. So that's all. That's all the information I had from him. So I thought that you had something. But. No. Okay. Well, uh, I'm thinking. Oh, I mean, at some point. We're gonna have to give them some back pay if we're gonna give two percent, three percent, or four percent, because it's it's in a budget. We should be doing something uh, at some point. Because all they, they want to wait another month, and because we should go back to town meeting day for whenever the budget get approved and whatever we make up for the decision. Yeah, I mean, what what whatever. Yeah, I. Yeah, I, uh, I like I said, I talked to one of the guys, and the other two, I didn't really have much of. When I had mentioned it to Gary, he was getting ready to leave, and he said that he had wrote something down, and so I thought he that you had it, Billy Joe. No. Okay, so then I don't have much to tell you. I, I okay. I guess we can just. Wait. We can make it retro and just wait till June. Right, wait. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we got the two bridge 50s to talk about. So what do you do with this executive session post? Just hit later or yep. exit out of it? Exit it? I just put later. Either way, it'll probably work. For right? you, it isn't going to matter because you're not going to go in. We're not going to discuss. Right. Right, okay. So I guess we can talk about Bridge 50 on, at East Bakersfield Road. Um, I was hoping to have an, an email response from an email from uh, someone there today from VTrans. Actually, the way I understand it's the lead engineer on that bridge is going to be the lead engineer or is. Um, from what I understand is that the, the, um, 
the engineering, the surveying has already been done on that bridge. And uh, we had a little discussion and was wondering, I sent an email out today that I had forwarded to, uh, I think to Billy Joe, uh, Larry and to Polly and uh, was questioning as to, uh, with the understanding that the surveying on that bridge was done, as I wanted to know if it was to do with the construction of a new bridge or if it was uh, to do with that evaluation, scoping and evaluation study. And I guess it's to do with the, the construction of the new bridge, of a new bridge. And uh, I guess it's, um, because the bridge is closed, they've kind of put it on a fast pace to try to get something done. So um, I'm just trying to find out from them the timeline as to how quickly they think that we will get a new bridge there. And I, I didn't get that response back before tonight, but um, it's kind of sounding like it's on a fast track because it's closed. So I don't know if we chose to go a different route and, and how important that is to the farm there, Dean, and, and, and to the people that live on that road. I don't know how, I'm sure knowing how long it's going to be that way, it would be a help. And that's what I was trying to, to find out, but I didn't really get a response yeah. back yet on that. But it sounds like it's on a fast track because it's closed. And, uh, and then yeah. assume that it would continue to move at a fairly steady pace until it, you know, if, if something changed, then maybe it would slow down. But uh, I don't know how your guys, how, how you're able to work around that or how inconvenient it is for you. What do you do about it? <laughs> Not much, you, know, you just kind of got to deal with it. That's <laughs> all. So. Yeah. That's what, nine, I think your dad says nine miles around or nine, nine miles of detour yeah i just went up there the other that way and it seems like about 30 but <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly because it's not yeah it's not paved highway no, no. but but yeah Hills. i mean you just you gotta we just gotta do deal with it and ain't nothing we can do about it so. okay yeah so there's not I not as much information there as I was hoping to have, but I think the way it sounds like if he was to put like a if we were to put a temporary bridge on there like we've done previous temporary bridge, if we do that it may be three, four years from now, but if we don't do that it may be next year. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But if we don't get I, I think if we continue the way we are, just keep it on fast track. But you get it at the end of the year, and then it looks like it's going to be another two, three years down the road or further. Then we're definitely, I think, going to have to think about a temporary bridge. Once you once you put a temporary in, they'd really drag their feet a lot more. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Well, it's going to fall down to the fact that you know, while there is an access now to get through there, so some other something else will come up some other place that, well, they're, 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 they're in motion now. So maybe we can focus our efforts on some other place, you know, where right. you know, being closed, it is, you know, it's kind of been pushed. Yep. So, um, so that's that with that bridge. That's all, like I said, I was hoping to have a response back so I could have some actual words that somebody said there to, to assure us, ensure us that uh, something's going to happen sooner than later, or not, or which which what which way, which way is going to happen. But so I don't know if there's got any more to comment about it or questions. Or... I think Dean's, you know, it's they're the ones that are going to affect the most, the right family. Oh. <clears throat> We'll, we'll survive either way. <laughs> I did have some yeah. people calling about worried about emergency services vehicles and when the bridge would be open. Um, I just told them we were waiting to hear from the state um, on that. So I guess, Joey, just keep asking the questions you're asking and we'll move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, all the emergency services are aware that it's closed and, and they need to take the other, a different route to get to that point. They're, they're familiar with that for sure. Okay. So you have the other bridge 50. I don't, I guess there was a, um, a I can read it. If everybody, does everybody have a copy of it or? Yes. 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 So it's basically just saying that the village did some work on it and they acknowledged that uh, uh, the town is not uh, going to be continuing to work on it. So they are going to, some expandable foam and asphalt patches. Uh, that's basically the most of what I get out of it. And then they're saying they're going to contact Transportation Bridge Division to do an inspection of the joints. Kind of summarizes it up. Okay. Have you talked to them at all, Joey? Um, no, I haven't. Not oh, okay. recently. Back when the when this first came up there earlier in the winter time, they I did talk with them a little bit, and then they ended up patching the joints up there at that time. They got the permission to do so. But uh, pretty much the way it was left is, remember you guys wanted me to go meet with Vaughn Como, and I did. And so we corresponded back and forth there several times, and relayed some information to him and back and forth. And then and he got some information that he had sent to the village's uh, lawyer, Jesse Bugby. So I think that was the last he had sent. I think I forwarded that to Larry and to Polly and I did to Billy Joe today. Um, the whole email trail there from, from start to finish starting back with the email that Polly had from that she had sent to Jim Coda and, and um, the response she'd gotten back from this Jonathan Croft from the mapping section division of the for VTrans and uh, some of their terms as far as the I guess there was a recodification of the night in 1986 of uh, title 19 some of the, the rules and laws of the uh, highways and um, I also talked to a lawyer from I think her name is Susan Senning mm -hmm. VLCT who she gave me a couple tidbits to send off to Vaughn which I did and and he looked that up and then he found this 1986 recodification and it's basically a bunch of uh, definitions of what back in the day it was a select board but select board now also means an alderman of a city city department or a trustee board of a village department. And it basically then tells definitions of highways and highways include bridges and culverts, any infrastructure within. And, and because there's a governing board with their own highway department, the village is on their own, has their own highway department. And it sounds like the fact that highways, definition highways, the bridges included within it, then it's the village's bridge. It's the way their interpretation is of it. And I think the, before that last email that Jesse had, Bugby had given some information to the trustees and they were looking for more clarification to it. And then Vaughn come up and he found the, this 1986 recodification and he had sent that last email to to Jesse, which had those descriptions of the defi different definitions. I guess you piece it together is when you come up with the, the understanding that it sounds like it's the village's road, so it's the village's bridge, and it's the governing body of the trustees to make sure it gets maintained. Good. And I don't believe there's been any response back, so this is a little sort of confusing as to why they're sending this now but dj can you uh just ask vaughn if he's heard anything back from them uh, sure give us an update on our uh, the next meeting or something that letter from gary denton was that 
saying the village was checking in on the bridge or they he wondering who was how did the way, way it's way it's worded is that he would advise getting this is gary's words i would advise getting in contact with the vermont department of transportation uh, bridge division to inspect the bridge expansion joints or any other problem that may be causing this issue so i don't know if they're looking for us to do that or it's yeah, the top of the paper it says two is to the board of trustees jonathan ewell village manager town select board joey clark so it's to everybody yeah yeah it, it, it was kind of confusing on who was left responsible uh, or yeah. to me it was in the end right it's looked like he's advising that somebody somebody yeah. that I don't he's gonna, yeah, put enough names down there. It's gonna be one of them. <laughs> I think he's just doing his due diligence, saying, "Hey, somebody needs to pay attention." Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because if we don't push the issue, it's gonna just pester, and, and we we need to put an end to this one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah, because it does need some more work. So somebody needs to be the one to do it or to, to make it happen. All right. Need to respond back to Gary, say, I'm, I'm assuming the village is taking care of this, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, I don't know if, if, if you would think if Vaughn had heard something back, he would have let somebody know, but maybe he, he just had. Uh, Hadn't gotten around to it yet or something either, so be worse. Could you, could you give Vaughn a copy of this too? I will. Okay. So he knows that there's a need for some clarity, so one of the municipalities will go forward to inspect the bridge from the transportation department. You got those, didn't you, Larry? The, the email trail that had been sent there before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what Vaughn had sent to Jesse there the last. So I haven't it, heard. It's been been a few weeks since I've heard. Probably. Yeah. I, it was, I, I haven't gotten in it. I did not get the email train. Okay. Might have been back in March. Yeah, it was in March. Uh, oh, okay. Then maybe I did. Do you have yeah, was... Billy Joe there where you can look at it? Of course, I could on my phone possibly, but. Billy Joe? I'm looking at it. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah, Polly CC. Yeah. I can't see you, so I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> back from March 12th and a little bit back from that, but I do see Polly is CC'd on it. Yep. I thought you meant recently. So yeah, no, I do no. have that one. No, so that was, as far as I know, they, the response was sent from Vaughn to Jesse. And then I assume he was going to get in touch with the trustee board. And then we were looking for a response back and I haven't heard anything. I think with this whole virus thing, everything just kind of stopped. So now right. we just got to get it going again yep so i guess that's it on the other the second bridge 50 unless you got more to add or more or questions no i'm good sounds good yeah That's all I've got on the agenda items for you, Joey, unless you got something else. No, I, I guess that's it. Maybe just a little update. The FEMA process there from last fall storm is still moving forward. Um, dealing with them with information. We've got quite a bit more of the work done. We've got more to do still, but uh, we're plugging away at that. Um, I guess that is about it. Okay. Thanks, Joey. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Joey. Yeah. Thank you. Guess I'll leave this, huh?
Have a good evening. Yeah, I'm headed out, I think. <laughs> yeah, you just... Must be Sean's at home. Uh -huh. Well, he was at the station. Right. I think I miscommunicated to him. What's next? Did we lose? Are you still there, Polly? Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, okay. Can you hear awesome. me? I'm on the phone now. Okay. <laughs> I've been bouncing back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I'm not sure what time it is. Uh, 6.45 is the next item of agenda. Vermont Connections contract comparison. So am I reading it correctly to see that it's only $200 less? Did I read that right? I haven't had a chance to look at it myself. My understanding is it's probably not a lot less, but we would, because so many of our um, devices are currently leased, we would have an out of pocket that probably would be quite large to begin with. What What's leased? I'm sorry. Um, I think the only items that we actually own and don't lease are the ones here at my office. The rest of, of the devices that we currently are using at the fire station and an ambulance service um, are on the lease from the disaster that was 2015. Right. So here's what I have a hard time figuring out is, um, so the price that we have kind of gives us an idea of what it would cost if we had to add equipment, but it doesn't actually say what the price would be if we added that equipment. Does that make sense? My understanding was last time he had the lease prices and then this time was supposed to be the purchase prices. Is is that what we asked for? Right. Did they, have to, did they word it right to him? This was from that last meeting that I wasn't at. Right. So he presented a proposal that was to lease our equipment and to upgrade the phone system at the station and to transfer everything that when it goes to the armory, he said it would be included, you know, for many other facets that are listed on the proposal, but it was all under any devices that we have, when it was ready for upgrade, it would be under a lease agreement. So we wouldn't be purchasing a full purchase price each time we needed something. So Polly made the good point and asked, what would it look like if we did have um, a proposal that was, we owned everything. And that's what this one was supposed to be. If I have that correct, Polly? Yeah, I was thinking that if we had bought the machinery, which, yeah, if we had bought the machinery, what would it cost? Um, it looks like he added a, a price to service that. Am I reading that right? Is this, is this or is this the newest or is this the I'm missing some pages. Here are the pages. Yeah, it looks like he added 560 bucks to manage the desktops and the laptops if we bought them ourselves. And he does break, he did give a pros and cons on the front page of the email, which I do think I gave everybody. Does anybody see the pros and cons? Yeah. Oh, and in that price previously presented, it does include 
upgrading the phone system, which you could choose to remove that. You don't have to upgrade, and that would take a little bit of money out. That was upgrading the phone system at the uh, emergency service building, right, BJ? That's, yes, the only one. Yeah. Not anything else. Yeah. What I don't understand, <laughs> maybe I'm having a hard time with this. <laughs> what I don't understand is those were pretty significant monthly prices for them buying the equipment. I don't know how getting rid of that purchase wouldn't drop the final price more. <laughs> Maybe the best thing to do is to get in person to person at the next meeting. He's, he's the best one to answer this stuff. I should have gotten him tonight. Sean, are you there? Do you understand this better than the rest of us? Could you explain it to us better? He doesn't have a copy of it. No, okay. I do not. Okay. So these two bundles of papers you gave me are all about buying it, not leasing. One or? one set from previous is the lease, <coughs> and the most current that was from today, which I'm not sure how I. There might be a date on them. Um, one set is lease. One set is purchase. Basically, we have to go page by page, look at each of them. So it looks like if you purchase <clears throat> the, the packet with a recurring total of 418880 is the lease. Yes. And the, the less expensive one is the purchase. Thirty nine forty nine. Sean, could you speak a little bit to this as far as what makes sense? Particularly, like, can I just run my thinking by you? Okay. Okay. So, from the previous one, we were getting charged, like, for instance, for desktops, $900 a month to lease the um, equipment mm -hmm. um, every year for five, five years. Um, sorry. Is it multiple desktops? Because that sounds. Yep, multiple yeah. desktops. But then. It was 97 per, de per well, laptop from the previous, right? If I remember correctly. Sounds right. Why don't we just wait and have him? Why don't, why don't we just wait and have, have uh, BJ get hold of Dave? at the next meeting and we'll hash it out right there. Otherwise, all we're doing is going around in circles. I'm just trying to get a handle on what I'm looking at. One lease, one owned. and uh, I'm not seeing a lot of 
huge difference, just like Bali was saying. Without having it right in front of me, it's kind of hard for me to. Yeah, true. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is, like, I feel like we're spend if we're gonna spend that much money a month when the cost of an entire laptop is twelve hundred bucks that would last three years. I don't know how it wouldn't bring the price down more. What what is the what is the individual like? Previously, it was ninety seven dollars for the for the lease and the management of the, of a single laptop. Let's say what is what is the comparison on this? That's what I'm having a hard time finding. I guess is what I'm saying. Let's see. Okay. I mean, that's 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 where that's where I would look is to see what the individual comparison costs were. Um, you know, I, you know, I, in the first comparison that I that I looked at, I did, um, you know, just using my laptop, I, it looked to be, you know, over a three year period, it looked to be like three point five x the cost of the of of a laptop. Um, yeah, they, I, it, right, it has the racy side, but you know what that does include your software suites and your management of that. Right. But, um, I would look to see what the breakout is for the individual uh, individual units of, of computers, because that's how they broke it out in the first one. Um, so that's what I would look for in the second version of this. So it looks like they have for a professional grade desktop computer with one monitor is $1,900. And a professional grade rugged laptop, which I, is $3,900 a piece. Like an annual fee? Uh, that's how much they would charge per if we were to buy it, that's how much it would cost us to buy. That's what they're saying. Do they have the professional grade? I don't think we have any ruggeds in the in our system. That's what right? I was wondering. I know in the previous one, he had a couple yeah, different yeah. options. Right. We have rugged ones in the ambulance and fire truck. Oh, do they? Right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so so it's looking like professional grade desktop computer with one monitor is 1924 if you bought it. And then on the other one it looks like 101 reoccurring. What's that monthly? What's that? So that's 1200 bucks a year. Uh, it says 909 over here so I'm missing something. Is there nine of them, Larry? Oh, there's nine of them. Okay, so that's yeah. so yeah, so that's times nine. So that's what I'm kind of getting at is if if and it costs it's nineteen five. So why is there less here than what we're getting over there? Yeah, it's confusing to me. Yeah. John, how long should these computers or laptops last? Yeah. Like three years. I mean, their their assessment of kind of a three year management was was appropriate. Um, you know, like the again, not having it right in front of me, it's hard it's hard for me to tell. But the two questions that I would seek to get answers for is, I you know, they they gave you kind of a upfront cost for purchase, which whether you purchase through them or any other vendor. Um, but what, what would be the individual unit cost for the management of a pre purchased device? Um, that would kind of be that's what I thought you guys were looking to get. Was... Right. Well, they added that too. Okay. They added they added that as um, right here. They added six hundred and no five hundred and sixty dollars a month for the management of purchased of equipment. All... Got it. Yeah. With the with the stipulation that you purchase hardware from them. I guess, I don't know if we made that stipulation, but that's what they've worked into their scenario. Yeah, 35 bucks each 
times 16. That's 560 you're talking about, Paula? Yeah. I mean, I guess I just don't know enough. I, I mean, yeah, I don't really know enough if that's accurate or not. So, so basically what they're saying between the two comparisons is like you said, it's like $200 difference for your current total at the end. Yeah. You own or lease. If you owned it all, you'd save a little bit. That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? What's the old contract price? It's roughly six hundred dollars less. Less than forty-one or thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Around 33 right now. Yeah. Are there any other companies that do this sort of stuff for price comparisons? Um, I, I don't think in Franklin County, there is in Chittenden County. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they've, they've been a good company. It's just, I just, mean, we need to understand these a little better. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for going with Vermont Connections. They've done right by us, but I just want to make sure that we're not paying right. when we, I, you know what I'm saying? I think, I think you, you both um, have valid concerns. So I think the easiest thing to do is to get him up here. Okay. I think that's, yeah, let's do that. And we've got these these two copies, and we can go through them. Uh, Sean wants to get a copy of the newer one here too. I mean, get his input too. Sure. That's why we want to understand it a little better before we sign it. Okay. Uh, not sure. Is it seven? Does anybody have a? Yep, seven o five. Seven o five. Okay, so Susie's on the agenda for seven o'clock. So I don't know if she's on. She's here. Okay. So we might as well move on to that, and we'll just uh, on Vermont connections. We'll try to have them meet next meeting. Hey, Susie. Yes. <laughs> Want me to go? Start with all my inquiries and requests or what? Oh, there's Matt. Matt joined us as well. Matt's on? Yeah. Uh, he had very little heads up, so get he um but he knows what we're here for. So um I sent the environmental report to Billy Joe to share with you. I hope you got that via email. Yep. Yep. Um, no big surprise there. Definitely mold downstairs. Doesn't seem to be any up in the in the grand room. Um, he, they talked about getting someone around remediation, but he he also said definitely probably we're gonna have to pull up the carpets. Um, and some of the remediation requires cutting the sheetrock up X amount of feet above where you see the mold and and whatnot. And then there's also air circulation issues. It would help um, contain that from happening and making it worse. There was also some talk about maybe cleaning the uh, duct work. Um, but I think, first of all, um, and we, I think, in the Opera House can do the some of the elbow grease of pulling up the carpet and um, that piece. But the water drainage system part, I, I think, needs to be tackled first before we start trying to correct something when we haven't really taken care of the water. I know Matt had asked 
about getting an electrician there to see um, about the water and the conduit, and I didn't know where we were at with that. Um, and then um, we talked with Jim Cameron the other day, and he's just gave me the email today of Peter Mazurik. He's a cons uh, engineer, and he's asked him to meet with us and look at the back of the building um, as a, basically, I guess, as a gift to Jim, because they have a relationship. So this is a, hopefully a non-cost thing. Um, if, it, if it is, I'll immediately get hold of you and see what we can do. But um, I'm going on that it's a gift. He's gonna come and just kind of take a look. Um, but Jim did express his confidence in Gary Denton, where that's concerned. He used to work for Tatro Brothers and had a lot of experience with drainage. So I wanna call in that marker with the town and village at some point. I can't remember who was what, Billy Joe, you'd probably remember better. It was gonna do some excavating and dig up so we could get some drainage in the back of the building when that time comes, which I hope to be sooner rather than later. Uh, yeah, we were talking about having Joey work with the village there together. We were hoping to get around June, June there, because I, I know that she's still busy on the back roads right now. Okay. So um, I'll keep trying to coordinate with Billy Joe to, to get that to happen when, when it's cleared up a little bit. I think one of the things that Matt and Heidi had talked to an Amanda, I think was her name, was about um, a grant and drainage around the parking lot, which I guess is all put on hold because of everything. But the question remains um, what the village is going to want us to do when we capture that water, <laughs> where is it gonna go? Um, so that that will be part of the project, figuring that part out. Um, we had a big meeting, don't let me forget to talk about painting. We had a big meeting the other night and um, last, so many years ago, you guys put up $500 on a Cincerbo grant um, and, the, and the grant matched another $500 and uh, whoever it is they got in there did a whole assessment of the whole building um, and things that we should do for maintenance and whatnot. And um, then last year, um, the Opera House ponied up the 500 and got a Censor Borough grant again. Um, and Matt worked with the guy, uh, Acadia Restoration, I think. And they came in and they did a full assessment of the windows. Um, and that, pro that provided the the instigation for us getting that Paul Brun grant. Lots of grants, I know the Masonic Hall, it was go for the censor bow, it puts you up in line, gives you a better chance to get the, get the real money for the work. So um, I think proof shows in the Masonic Temple how they did that, how we did it last year for the Paul Brun grant. Um, what we'd like to do with the Paul Brun grant and, and Matt and Heidi are talking with Lisa Ryan and Parks, whoever is running the, the grant, they want some sort of investment on our end in the grant. And we think that we can say um, the town is doing the painting for X amount of dollars and that's the investment in the building. So the project would change from windows and doors to windows and painting and the town's ponying up the painting it shows the investment so we can get the money for the windows. Does that make sense to you all? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we're, yep. we're looking into that. We haven't got the final, final word on that, but um, we would like to ask for out of our line, uh, $500 to apply for the sensor Brook grant again this year. And this one, it would be around ADA compliance um, and looking to see if there's anything also, we have some things around ADA accessibility, but um, is there any impact maybe that would have on our door project as well? Um, I don't know so much, Matt, do you wanna to speak to that piece? You gotta unmute him. I gotta unmute, hold on, sorry. There you go. Yeah, I can hear you. There you can, okay. Um, so yeah, so the, um, Heidi and I had a talk with the, um, Lisa Ryan from Preservation Trust um, toward the end of April. And um, we were talking about this Bruin Grant project and um, uh, 
we kind of got into talking about other projects the opera house would like to work on and one of those being um improving the side entrance so that it's handicap accessible and it's it's uh, ada compliant for um basically redoing that porch on the side and then the other issue being the front entrance and how snow comes off the roof there in the winter and that's kind of a hazard so um we were talking about that with her and she said that Preservation Trust has a, a person they work with. I think he is an architect. And what they, what this uh, grant that they would give us is for us to hire him to do um, basic um, uh, planning and design around different options to solve those problems. Conceptual. Um, so, yeah, concept. So that would, but that would include preliminary design work and cost estimates for a couple of different scenarios for how to proceed with the project. So for the front entrance, for example, one way to mitigate that might be to build a, put a vestibule on the front of the building. So there would be cost estimates for that. Another way to mitigate it would be some sort of way to divert the snow um, and not change the front of the building at all, but just find, add some sort of snow guard or something that would divert the snow and ice or something. So that's just an example um, of the sort of, but he would, that would include so the $500 from us would be matched by $500 from Preservation Trust. And they would use that to uh, hire this guy and he would provide um, different scenarios for both of those, um, uh, making the, both of those entrances accessible and safe and a couple different options, some preliminary design work and cost estimates for how to do that. I will forward you last year's report. They're really quite detailed. I think um, for a thousand bucks, um, you you get a good uh, map forward and some good estimates, which you know I think through Matt and Lisa Ryan got us that Paul Brune grant. So you get your money back for sure. Um, so I'd like to request. Uh, I don't know if Billy Joe, if you had time to look at the line item, see how it was. I can only imagine that it must be less because we're not in there using electricity or anything. No, um, it's not very much used because typically it's just utilities anyway. Right. So I'd like to request 500 from that line to get that sensible grant. Like I said, we funded it out of Friends of the Opera House last year. The previous round before that was you guys. Um, and I will forage you last year's report. It was focused on the windows, which we're trying to address with the Paul Brun. So that's one item, one action item, actually. Susie, uh, with that, um, this is the one you're talking about. So last year you said they just focused on the windows. They did, they did windows and I don't know if they really touched on the doors. We'd already had somebody looking at the doors, but they looked quite extensively at that and the tower, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about because I know we need to talk about painting. Um, but it'll give you an idea of, of what you get for that. Um, yeah. $1, with, a, with that, with that, they, they don't look at the whole building. They just, they kind of focused on, they're there focused on something. Yeah. Okay. The first one, they um, was pretty widespread. They they came up with a hit list and, I, and I'll send that, I'll send both of them to you, but I know you have that old one somewhere. <clears throat> they talked about pointing the, the, one the stonework to insulating the walls. I mean, it was pretty widespread that yeah. one, you know. Go ahead, Matt. I, I think the one that was done is like in 2010 or something like that. And that was basically an energy audit. Oh, um, energy. Okay. Yeah that's basically what it was and then they you're right it, yeah it was a blower test and all that stuff but then they talked about all the strategies you could use to you know insulate the building but yeah all right. anyway so, that's all so yeah. this one would be focused on um ada accessibility mm -hmm. which would include talking about we've talked about that vestibule for quite some time um or something to mitigate the ice fall i mean somebody walking under that door at the wrong time, done. I just, I, I can't keep, <laughs> really makes me worried. But um, when Matt talked about the side, the side thing as well, um, the Disabilities Act requires that if you bring somebody out on that side, say the elevators and everything shut down, they have to be a certain amount of feet away from the building so that you have time to get them, carry the wheelchair down the stairs or whatever it is you have to do. And it's um, too small for that, doesn't provide that uh, footage. So that's another thing that we would be looking at. Um, some of the other grant stuff that we've been talking about, just to get you up on speed, is 
Um, there's a Vermont Community Development Implementation Grant that would specifically help with the actual rehabbing of the doors. I'm not sure about where that's at. Maybe this is just for information only, but we are putting in, we put in our, our, our request to Sean to keep us um, in the know and let other people know that we are planning on um, going, we would have to go through you guys. I mean, I talked about it, Polly, you brought it up because you would talk to the municipal planning grant. Mm -hmm. Um, that's due in October, but that would really help us line up fund sources, uh, provide guidance and help us prioritize a lot of the work that we're looking at and where we can get, get funds. Um, the other piece to that, that we're going to start pursuing and Sarah Tugas is looking now is, um, historic, uh, tax credits for the building, even though you're a municipality and you don't pay, um, uh, the tax, well, we don't pay a property tax on that per se. Um, the People's Trust Company is one bank, and I think there's others that will buy your historic credits from you, and then they resell them. They did it over at the Quincy. I know when I worked for Bo Vukovic, he did it in Bennington and St. Albans, and they were paying 80, 90 cents on the dollar. So it's a, it's a good source of funds, and Sarah's uh, reached out to find out more information about that, but that's something that we are looking into. We're we're trying to exhaust everything grant-wise and whatnot to really take advantage of this year and get work done. Um, hey, Sean, can you just take like a straw poll of um, of the Planning Commission and the Rec Department and just see, so we know basically who's thinking about the Municipal Planning Grant? At this time, Opera House is the only one that's approached me with oh, okay. interest. Okay, if you could just reach out to those other two just to make sure that that way we know um, if the Opera House wants it that they're on the fast track for it. Mm -hmm. right. The other question planning, was, we don't know what the planning commission is. Town and village, I mean, how does that work? Would, could one, if there was someone else who wanted to, could they apply under the no? No, it's it's one one per municipality. Okay. So we've been talking, hopefully we're up at the top of the list, but Sean, you can make it confirm. Matt, what am I missing? Um, oh, I just wanted to, um, Dean, to your question a minute ago, um, that municipal planning grant, if we were to receive that, um, part, that's where we would like to do um, a kind of total assessment of the building, is to use that grant for, you know, all the planning that we want to do with the building, improvements in, you know, energy, all, all sorts of, uh, most of the, we want to have a, that's the, where we would want to use that grant to take a holistic view of the building and what the plan, the big picture plan is for it and put together all these little pieces that we've been working on. Um, and then out of that, we would get a kind of a master plan for the building. Um, and that's what we'd hope to use that municipal planning grant for. Okay. You know, that makes sense yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 Attending, uh, Denny's attending a, uh, um, applying for grants and fundraising in these times. That's tomorrow morning from 9.30 to 12. And Caitlin Corkins is, is I don't know if we're doing that by a phone, Matt, or she's coming up. Is that Thursday at three o'clock or something? I, it's on the 20th, yeah. Um, I, I don't know how we're doing that, but yes, okay. we have a meeting with them too. Yeah. So um, we're, we're really trying to hit all things running and Sean will send you that information if you want to join. Um, I talked to Jim. We last time we talked about painting. Um, it was like, what can we do with that bid so we can get it out and get it going? And I talked to Jim, um, and he came over and looked. Uh, Jim Cameron, his his lift com comes in July, and it'll be there. It'll be in town, and it'll be for our use. And Jason Doe, um, I don't know if he knows that he was offering it to us, but he offered up his lift as well as in thanks for all the work that was being done on the Masonic last year. Um, he has, Jim has two people who are lead certified, so he knows um, how to deal with that. And he knows that we need to cover that base, but he would, he would like to work on the tower and work on some of the carpentry pieces um, that we have along with, you know, with guidance from people who are doing it with volunteers. The other thing that he offered up out of the blue, which was really nice, is he's got all the equipment. Um, the only expense would be the paper, and I know that you use a lot of paper, but and the, whatever um, finish we put on the floor, but we could get that main floor sanded 
um, with his equipment and, and help, which is a big deal. I know when we looked at it a long time ago, Abbott's, it was going to be $10,000 to, to refinish that floor. So um, that, that was a nice offer. So I think um, I would like to see you go out to that, to that bidder and say, you know, the front and the side, take the, take the tower out of the equation. That's the part that they said made it so expensive. Say, okay, well, t take the tower out of the equation. Can you do the front and the side and can you do it the summer? I mean, am, am I misreading how they did their bid, Larry? Well, yeah, that's what they included the tower last, last year. We didn't budget for a price like that because we were expecting, I think, it was around sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars from the previous year, and it came back at I don't know twenty five, over twenty five thousand. Yep. Um, and that sixteen thousand you asked for the voters to set aside, so that's not even in the line, right? It, it's in, it's in this year's budget. It's in a line item. It's included. Well, you went out, you asked for a separate um, approval from the voters at the meeting for an additional amount outside of the line. Last year's 16.5 got forwarded, but it's also, there's two things bundled in that line item. It's, it's also for the repairs of the town offices. The 16.5, I don't have the, Billy Joe, do you have the book in front of you? Yep, I'm <clears throat> looking now. So we had we had some stuff we were going to do for the windows, like a town clerk's office, a bunch of other stuff that didn't get done, and all that stuff got forwarded. We put it on there one line item. Sixteen. Okay. So there is another line. It's not that's the the regular line that the opera house. There's another line you're saying that would the painting would come out of. Yes. You're right. Yeah, so we had. I think, I don't know. It's 46.5 in that special fund, Larry. Okay. And 16.5 of that was for the painting. Yes. So, great. So, um, what what can I do, Billy Joe, to help, or any of you to help get that moving? Well, don't we, do we have to rebid it? Because it was yep. last year. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we do. Can I, can I help you? Um, maybe you could send a cover letter as well and saying we're rebidding the same project, but we're taking the tower out. I can touch base with the boys. Yeah. Yeah. Let them know so that when they see it, they know what they're bidding and can we send it out or get it posted like next week? <laughs> Yeah. Right. I can just check with the guys who did the job before and see if they're interested in doing it. But you know, you, ha you have to bid it. We, post. we have to bid it. Even if we go by the bid they gave us a couple years ago, Polly, do we get a rebid it or not? I believe a bid is good for one year and then it's done. Okay. I could be wrong. You could double check me. All right, we'll just, we'll just put a notice out. Even I mean, if it's 18,000, I mean. Yeah, we've got it to do, we've got it. And we've got, and the other, the regular line item should be able to pick up some slack because of the lack of other stuff we got going on it. Yeah, I say we just post it in the paper. I mean, people might be kind of hungry right now for painting jobs. So I say we rebid it and see what we get. Yep. Last time you didn't get anybody, though. I, I agree with you, Polly. Hopefully there'll be people hungry. But I think a few phone calls saying, listen, it's posted right now. If you want to bid, do it. Yeah, no, for, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, is that something we can get posted right off, BJ? Yep. Yeah, she can no problem awesome um the only last piece that i was going to do is um we were going to reach out to steve o'malley he came up to do some work uh with jim it was jim's idea i think we know the answer but to just kind of take a look at the upstairs and make sure that the humidity levels in the building aren't counterproductive to the paint 
higher humidity levels, your paint doesn't stay on as long. But I think we've done well in that building um, as far as the longevity of the paint. I think if there's any humidity issues, we know they're downstairs in the basement. Um, so I was going to see if he would, if he was in the area doing something just to take a quick peek and get his two cents. But I'd like to see us move forward with the bid on the essence of time. That would be great. What am I forgetting, Matt? I think that's pretty much where we're at. Is a good. I think that's a pretty good uh, summary of what we've been up to. Okay. So I guess I'll go back to um, before we get done. If we could have um, your thoughts on the five hundred dollars um, for the sensor bow, and what I will do um, just to give you some information is I'll send you both those reports. I know, Larry, you have the older one on the whole building. And I think you do too, Billy Joe, but um, uh, the previous one, uh, the old, uh, old one, but you don't have the one from last year, I don't think. And I'll send you that one. It gives a good explanation about the windows and, um, and you can see how that sparked when they came forward and said, is there, you know, you have a project on the, on the burner. And Matt was like, yes, here it is. And we've had it semi-evaluated. It was a good move. So. Yeah. Cause the previous one was pretty much saying there's like a, foot of space between the walls that need that's to get the in. one you remember how, how do you do that it was a cave yeah i'll do that right now so i'll send it to you billy joe they'll have it you'll have it in like five minutes okay i'm okay with the 500 for the grant me too yeah, yeah it should be in here for sure this year because everything's running a lot less now i agree Thank you, you very much. A, do you need a motion or are we just uh, agreeing on it? I think it'd be great if you had a motion. I'll move. I'll second it. So Polly made a motion and, and uh, Dean seconded to allow the $500 matching grant for the Opera House. Uh, what's the name of that? Sincerbo grant, S-I-N-C-E-R-B-E-A-U-X. CISBO grant. Uh, <laughs> any more discussion? Uh, if having none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Hey, there we go. Awesome. Thank you. That's all I got. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Susie. Okay. Thanks, Susie. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Matt. BJ, I got something here with Mercy's Heating Service. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, that was for Joey. He was supposed to take a look at it and discuss it if he wanted to. So. Oh, okay. I was like... Town garage, we yeah, got hooker plugs and all this. They've been having difficulties with the heating over at the garage, and I guess those are two solutions. And he needs to look at them and then ask you guys which one you want to do. Okay, so yeah, he should bring that up next meeting then. Okay. Uh, bearing myself in paper here. Um, it must be past 7.15. 7.30. All right. So we have Scott Fliegler on for 7.15. So if he's standing by, we should <laughs> move on. Uh, so, I'm here. Is that something? Who's your friend, Dean? <laughs> Is Scott? I'm on. I'm here. Uh, Scott? Hey, Scott. Hello. Yep. Oh. All right, so.
we have two things on the agenda with you as the monitors and an executive session. Um, was there, I also saw, was, are we supposed to go over the budget? Uh, I just wanted to go over, well, no, I didn't, I was just curious where we were at given the uh, pandemic. We obviously noted a very significant drop in calls, so obviously we're not generating the revenue, so. so yeah, I that kind of surprised, <laughs> it didn't surprise me again, but. Uh, I was just curious where we are. We're actually not too bad off from where I thought we were, so. So I anticipate we should be able to make that up probably over the summer if things continue as they are, so. Okay. This, this budget that we got, is that through April? May. Through May, or for today, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the. Uh, um, The good thing is salary or intercepts rather, we're not calling Amcare much anymore because we have Kelly. So, so that's gonna save us. I think those were from before Kelly got up on on board as a medic, so. But everything else is, seems to be okay with just regular daily day-to-day -day operational stuff, so. Yeah. I mean, even our equipment and supplies, we're not ordering a lot because we're not have, we don't have calls. So, and anything we're ordering is replacing expired stuff. So I missed the last meeting, and I saw on the minutes, which we're gonna remind me, BJ, that we have to do the minutes now that Dean's on before we're done tonight. Uh, I see in the minutes there that uh, they they've got some sort of machine or order a machine to disinfect the rigs and trucks and stuff. Terry presented that last meeting. So, so is it ordered or? It is ordered, but it can't be here until mid June. Okay. So in the meantime, Scott, are you doing disinfectants between every call? Yes, we're wiping. We wipe down the ambulances. Uh, daily actually um, and we're cleaning out the back and then after every call we decon at the hospital and wipe down with the uh, disinfectant wipes etc so everybody's got PPE um, face masks goggles face shields etc so uh, we really haven't had to purchase much because a it's not available but b I before the uh, state sort of Kind of clamped down a little bit on uh, disseminating equipment out. I sort of put in for it every week that I could, so I was able to kind of stock up a little bit before the state sort of said, "Hold on a second, let's just do this two weeks at a time sort of deal." So, right. right. So, uh, as long as we're going in the way we're going as far as direction goes, uh, we should be okay. We do have enough masks and uh, gloves and gowns and such to get us through so and if the governor keeps opening things back up and we'll see what happens from there but well uh, yeah i i recognize the uptick in traffic on main street today for sure <laughs> yeah so but no otherwise i think everybody's you know we just listen to dispatch and everybody goes in usually with masks and uh, gloves and goggles and then we Go from there so we haven't really had to wear gowns knock on wood because we haven't really encountered many symptomatic covid symptomatic patients yeah that's you know that's something we definitely have to be aware of going into the summer depending on how many things get opened up and uh, i see a thing just the other day there was some parties in plattsburgh and there were some cases all of a sudden blew up so Oh yeah, I mean, I anticipate- It's warmer and everybody wanted to get out and it's still out there, so. Oh yeah, I anticipate there'll be a second wave here probably in the next month or so, but. Yeah. So far, so good. All right, so monitors. Yes. Oh. 
Uh, our cardiac monitors, as you know, we sent them off to Zoll to get uh, serviced and um, estimates on repair. Um, you know, as you know, that the FDA come February is no longer recognizing the current models that we have. So um, Zoll inspected both of our monitors and sent us back the repair estimates, both of which are at $2,300 each uh, to repair them as they are. Um, I talked with our sales rep who works up in this area um, and he advises that we should think about just going forward and doing the lease program uh, with the information that uh, we have here we can discuss um, because as it turns out those monitors both um, he could give us two thousand dollars basically uh, for both monitors as a trade-in so they're not even worth the money that would be spent on repairing them at this point. So um, we've had good luck with them, but they are 11 years old and it's time that they get replaced. Um, usual lifespan for cardiac monitors is five to six years. So we've stretched it out. So, so. What, yeah. what, Scott, what's the status on were you, the grants or anything? Was there anything available for them? So the AFG assistance to firefighter grant, uh, we, unfortunately, the fire department, uh, the, the um, FEMA only accepts one tax ID number per grant application. So the fire department had already submitted theirs. So we got rejected on that right away because obviously they can't do two. So uh, Sean had mentioned that he was found one online um, so that uh, we could look at, but you know, it's only I think he said at most 25,000, which obviously would help, but um, you know, with the leasing program, you know, it's no money out front. And basically if anything breaks, we just send it back, we get a loaner and then uh, they send it back to us once it's all fixed. So, and then at the end of whatever the term that we decide, um, if we decide, then we just send them back. And you know, I know, uh, I had suggested the five-year one just because at that point something else might come along and it's kind of like a car lease. We can just say, okay, here's the old ones back. We'll take the new ones and then just sort of go through, go back through the lease program again. So, but how much, how much is the lease? Um, so it depends on how many years we want to do uh, for three years. The payments would be 1730 a month for both monitors. And then you'd have a buyout at the end of $15,000 total. Uh, if we did a four year lease would be $1,384 a month with a buyout of 12,005 for the two units. And then the five year one would be $1,224 a month with a buyout of 7,500 for the two units at the end of the month. And you said typically these monitors should be replaced every six years you're saying? Every five to six years is when five to six the recommended years. Yep, life cycle is. And like I said, okay. we're over 11 years old. So we've stretched right. out as much as we can. And they're, start, they're starting to show. I mean, as I had put in the grant narrative, which unfortunately couldn't submit, you know, it's a lot of times now we're getting false vital signs in the ambulance, which is making, you know, it difficult for us to treat the patient because we got to figure out whether that's an accurate reading or if it's just the monitor being funky so um, so it's impacting patient care proper patient care if we you know choose to do one thing or the other so and have we had any problems with it in the past uh, last year when I took over I sent them out to be serviced uh, we were still having the same issues but they didn't find anything wrong when they sent it back uh, this time around when they sent it when I sent it out they found that the uh, non-invasive blood pressure cuff that we use. The pump is gone, which is the big chunk of change there, um, which would make sense because that's what we're getting is false blood pressure readings. So these are good until February. So that is correct. Excuse me? Yes, that is correct. So why couldn't the leases start then? And, and can we do a year lease and try to get grants and try to own them? 
putting a lot of money down because uh, this we we're already in a hole to the general fund for thirty two thousand dollars that has to get paid back and we gotta I don't know where we're gonna get, keep getting revenue. Well, I understand that. However, I mean, if we keep you know piecemealing these machines together, it, it, at some point it's just going to fail completely, and then we're going to be out of service because we don't have the proper equipment. You know, this lease program is new to Zoll, and you know, honestly, I think it's a pretty decent. If we did the five-year term at twelve hundred dollars, you know. I think what Larry was saying is that he wasn't opposed to the leased idea, that he wanted to lease it for a shorter period of time so that we could get some grant money to pay out the end. Am I correct in your thinking, Larry? Um, yeah, we should be able to, to, put, to try to get a grant every year for one of these, is what I'm saying. And if you do a five-year lease, well, you're not going to try to get a grant. Uh, you won't be able to get a grant, something you already own. What's that, BJ? I don't believe you can get a grant on something you already own. Well, oh, uh, that makes sense too. The problem with the AFG, the Assistance of Firefighters grants, is that they are very competitive and that the ch chances of us getting it are slim to none. Uh, you see the fire department had applied how many years and it finally took them to ask for budgeting to get new gear. You know, the problem is if we keep waiting on grants that, you know, are few and far between, we're going to end up in a position where it's going to be a patient's life on the line and it's going to come back. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that we shouldn't be committing for five years if we can get something cheaper in the meantime. If we can sustain ourselves, I really believe... You know, we haven't really tried to get a grant yet. So how how do we, we haven't been turned down because we really haven't applied yet? No, but there are not very many grants out there for EMS equipment. It's more for the fire side. What about a refurbished machine? Uh, I mean, we're talking if we're looking at a refurbed machine, which they don't have, you know, on hand at the moment. It's usually a kind of a First come, first serve type deal. You know, you're talking twenty five, thirty thousand dollars. So, you know, at least this this way, if you're leasing it, you got maintenance and warranty coverage for the entire duration of the lease. You know, we're not paying anything. You just have the fixed payment a month, and then if something breaks or needs calibration, we send it back. You know, we get a loaner in the interim, and then it doesn't cost us anything. So, I, I don't know. I just you know, the longer we wait the more, you know, chances are that something's going to happen in the back of the ambulance and it's not going to be a good situation, so. How big are uh, these things? Sorry, Dean, go ahead. No, I just, how often do we, how often do they use the second ambulance? Do they need two or do we just need one? Um, we use the second ambulance on every, for one week out of the month and then it goes out on backup calls when we have backup you know, if we have a backup call and a backup crew with summer coming and school getting out soon, uh, that will happen, you know, more frequently like it did last year uh, with Kelly and Ginger around and such. So they're not, are they mounted into the ambulances? They're not portable? Uh, they are, they can, well, they are portable, but they have to be mounted for safety's sake. Um, so that would be another potential expense that we would have to look at here amount of them depending on the type of model we get so okay so did you so okay these are all lease prices you got per month what what is it how much is it outright so what the lease the monitor. if you didn't lease it if you bought it if because we, like, I'm looking at prices per month for five years. So what would the price be if we bought it and got a loan for it? What would it cost us for five years? So the other monitor that I had presented, that would be, uh, 
let's see here, it was 38,762.85 was for the other type of monitor that we had, that we had looked at there that I had provided back a while ago. So roughly around the same price. So 38, $39,000 for, for one. So. so the lease prices here are for two units? Correct. Yeah, but that's a piece, right? No, the lease payments are for the combined, the two units total. So for three years would be 1730, four years would be 1384, five years would be 1224. That's for the both units and it's not for each unit. Does it say what the interest is on it? Uh, those are just rough estimates that the sales rep gave me. Okay. Obviously he didn't get into so, these. Yeah, but on lease, Leases, there's no interest, it's just payments. Correct. That's a, I, I wouldn't think so. Yeah, it's a fixed month payment. So, we're looking at 30000 a year. What was that, Pierre? No, we're, we're looking at somewhere that's around 30000 a year, so to speak. For say say the four year term, so that's fifteen. That's I'd say we we find out in least one. Find out what? That that'll buy us some time, and then from there, in a year or two, we can find a, a second one. Are they willing to do that? I can ask Ryan if we can lease one. So would you want to lease one and then repair one of the current ones that we have to tie by this time until, I mean, come February, then that leaves us back down to one serviceable monitor. I, I know, but. My understanding with the monitors, it's they're not obsolete. It's just the, the service things that go with them, the batteries, the leads, those. So if you bought enough stuff ahead, would you be able to a few extra months out of it? No, because the problem is that if there is a problem with it, such as what they found now, they will not service it. So if you send it in to them, they will just take it and say, thank you very much. And you're out of monitor. So well, that's understandable. But like, if we had this stuff, and we just have them service now, and we they were working fine, and we had enough of the materials that go along with them, they are not. There were no problems. We would still be okay. The problem is that they're not working fine. The problem is that we are getting false vital sign reading from these monitors that we had. That's why I sent them in for service at your folks' request to buy us time until we could look at other options. They sent them back, and this is what they found was that the pumps on both of them were not working, which would explain why we were not getting accurate blood pressure cuff readings. But they're repairable. They are repairable, yes. So we can either spend the forty-six, forty-seven hundred dollars now, and wait till February when it's D-Day and we have nothing to replace them with, or we can lease one, like Pierre said, repair one so that that one can stay on the backup truck, and then sort of go from there and figure out how things are working for the next six months till November, and then go from there. So you're looking at for a year, if you're going to lease to around fifteen thousand dollars, and then at the end, if you're going to go five years, and then you would buy out at the end of seventy five hundred for two units combined or each. Oh, for both the units it would be seventy five hundred for both units. So you would be paying fifty about twenty six thousand dollars a piece. If at the end you would own them, right? And they maintain them. At least you don't pay for anything. And no, we don't. If, if something goes wrong under the lease term, you know, while it's under a lease. They would send it in and they would fix it 
So it's covered between maintenance and warranty for the entire duration. We would pay nothing out of pocket other than the exact fixed payment per month for the monitors. And then obviously at the end, when we, if we bought them out, right, then yes, we would you go back to paying what we would have to pay regularly for a service call. So assuming we would need it. Is there any way to get out of the, these leases if we were to come up with a grant map? But yet you're saying if we got the equipment, they won't give us a grant, right? Yeah, I don't think you would get a grant for something you purchased. Yeah, okay. I mean, I get we. Sh I think we should do the lease. The only thing about going too long is that you're done the lease and it's time to replace again. It's so like what was four years, Scott? Uh, Thirteen eighty four a month. With a buyout of what? Uh, Twelve thousand five hundred for both units. I think that might make the most sense. So what's what's that total? Thirteen eighty four times twelve times four. About three about thirty thousand. So that'd be forty. I'm a little concerned that these don't include interest. That's what I'm what? There's no interest and well, I, I don't know that I think we need to see an actual contract with the very yeah. interest rate schedules and not just an email. Let me see if I can get Ryan on the phone and then um, I can put him on speaker and we can chat. Well, would you be able to get us that information next meeting? Yeah, I can shoot Ryan a message tonight and have him, you know, put out a or put something together more formally and then right a proposal that would be great okay I can yep. do that. yeah can you see if like like Pierre said because we definitely don't have it in a budget for this year to do to start doing two right now is if you could go with one until February and then can you work it in at a price per month with two if we decide to go with two in February so we would lease one new one now and then repair one of our current ones. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. All right. Scott, have him do a lease compared to a buy, just a straight buyout or buy in one too, just so we can understand them. Okay. Please. Thanks. All right. I will email him tonight and ask him to get that information to me ASAP because the, otherwise the tech people are waiting for an answer from us too it was whether or not to repair the current ones that they have down there because we have loaners right now that they're itching to get back. So. I think you should at least, you got, one of ours is down here right now? Both of them. Both, both, both oh, of ours. We our, don't have any right now? No, we, we have loaners. We have oh, long, okay. <laughs> but yeah, they're only they're only on. So yeah, they have loaners which are out for thirty days essentially. So and we're in basically fifteen day fifteen right now. So oh, hang, hang on a second here. Uh, twenty three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're talking twenty three hundred dollars to repair one. Uh, twenty three hundred dollars each to repair both of them, or yeah, it's, it's, well, it's $46, $4,700 to repair both of them. So, so. Yeah. Are there any, uh, so in other companies, you have check prices? Uh, sorry. Go ahead, Pierre. No, I was just I was just saying. So by having these upgraded and everything like that, um, that just buys us time, right? Just get you to February. Yeah, if we lease if we lease one and repair one, yes, that will buy us. Well, the leased one will meet compliance for FDA, so we don't have to worry about that one come February. It would be the other one 
that is repaired that we would have to figure out if we're going to lease again or buy or what we're going to do with that one. So. I'm just trying to think through the repair versus, I mean, if you're going to spend $2,300 on one to repair it, and the lease is, what was it, 1200 for two? So you're talking $600 a month lease. So that's four months of a repair. And we're, I guess, if you repair, you're going to save a little bit. Well, the other thing to remember too is these machines are only worth a thousand dollars each, so they're not even worth the price of the repairs at this point. It's like spending money on a car that's you know worth less than the repair. Unfortunately, we've all done that. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not saying that's a you know <laughs> story of life, but yeah. Unfortunately, it's also, you know, buyer's remorse when we're like, oh, crap, so. So we, yeah, we, we still we, probably leaning on trying to repair one of them there. So I, will, I, I want to see more information on that lease to understand if there's any, anything that we're not seeing that may come up and get us later. So you're concerned about the actual contract interest rates versus our questioning interest rates that are and then what's the time frame on getting one of these once we say yes so what would happen is uh we would trade in so if we leased one new one we would trade in one of our current monitors that we have and the sales rep will provide us with a loaner until the actual machine gets here. So that would be probably a six week turnaround because they have to calibrate it and do all that fun stuff to it. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I'd like to be able to see the terms right now and make sure you know we're not going to have some hidden costs that we're not seeing right now um, for leases and all right well i will i will have him do a proposal contract that obviously he knows we're looking for everything and then go from there i'll get that ask him to do that asap yes um what is the first Monday of June? It's it's actually the first, first. the first, the first. The first of June? Yeah. Okay. So that's not too bad then. Two weeks. No dairy day thing going, so <laughs> we'll all be there. <laughs> so should I give Zoll the go ahead then to repair one of the monitors at this point? Because if we wait till the first, then we're out of our 30 days, or, and then they're going to send them back to us and want their talk, loaners back. And then I talked nothing. to somebody at Zoll, and they said that we just only need to keep them informed, and they would be fine with what we're doing. Okay. I'm inclined probably to get one, but yeah, I want to be able to see what all this lease stuff is. And, uh, yeah, you're talking what eight months to February? Yeah, we're so, mid May now, so yes. So you're to fix one is gonna cost you twenty four twenty three, twenty four hundred dollars and to lease one is gonna cost you around four thousand in that same time period. So I would like to repair one and save a little bit of money at that time. But so you're leasing if two. Made it first, BJ, uh, if that is true, we can make all these decisions then. Okay. If not, send an email around and we can pull everybody to, if we have to get one of them started getting fixed right off.
Okay. Yep. All right. So we need to go in executive session to um, talk about personnel, and I'll need a motion to entertain. I'll move. Before we do that, hey, hey, on. Yeah. Before we do that, just a, a quick follow up. So, uh, subscriptions for Berkshire, Enosburg, Montgomery, and Bakersfield are going to be coming up to go out here shortly. And at a previous meeting, we had talked about increasing that to $75. I don't know if you guys want to still do that given the current economic situation, or you want to hold off to keep it at 65 Because I need to start getting the need to start getting i think i think you, if you increase it i don't think it's going to be that bad you're talking how much 10 bucks and yeah i think i think we should we need to go that direction because we can't can't keep sitting at the figure we've been at for 10 years and not doing anything we're going to try to start getting a little bit more on revenue I'll address the board feels. Yeah, no, increase it to 75. So 75? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I just got to change the uh, subscription agreement. That's all. Okay. Thank you. So there's a motion and a second to go into executive. Okay. Uh, Dean made the motion. Yes. Uh, I didn't hear who seconded. I, I seconded it. Polly seconded. Okay, yeah. so the most remain and seconded to uh, go in executive session and talk about uh, personnel. Uh, any more discussion? If having none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Did we survive? We survived. The portal? You did. All right, so we got Dean, myself, Pierre. And we did, yep, yeah, we're all here. All, okay, so the last thing on the agenda would be to go back to the minutes, and I couldn't move on that because uh, I wasn't at the last meeting. I'll, I'll move. I'll second. So Polly made a motion to approve the May 4th minutes. Dean Wright seconded. Any more discussion? If having none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. There we have it. I'll move to adjourn. Oh, actually, wait. Before that, um, I got a just an update from Yvonne. Sounds like somebody broke into the community center Ooh. and stole some things. Yeah, Sean, it was uh, what the um, like the Alexa, right? The Amazon voice activated thing, and then a security camera. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't sound like it was a big big break in but they were broken into they yeah, the, called um, the police yeah we'll go sean the uh the internal office that i sit in um that door was mangled with pretty bad that's how i initially noticed it as i went to go into my office and i couldn't get my key in the door because someone had tried to jimmy it with a screwdriver and then huh. I was finally able to get the door open and open the door and you could tell someone was really trying to pry at the pry at the door jam. And um, the the odd thing to me was there was no signs of any external entry. So it was kind of odd. <laughs> um, so um, we went and looked at the logs for the keypad entry to, to the essentially the main entrance. Yeah. Um, 
and Yvonne did confirm with Turning Point. Turning Point was the only person to use it during kind of that period of time that um, we felt it was. Um, uh, she confirmed that it was Maria from Turning Point that did come in, that um, it wasn't like a code that was passed on to somebody that they got access to the building. Um, I can't see anything. The only thing I can fathom is that somebody somewhere um, has a key to the ramp door. Because I, I can't see anywhere where they would have gotten in uh, elsewhere. Oh, so the door that was jimmied was just to your office. It wasn't yeah. an outside door. Oh. Correct. Yeah, that's what was odd about it is there was no signs of forced entry. This is me putting my cop hat on, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> this is, There was no signs of forced entry from the outside. So it, it looked like someone had access to the building in some way. Um, I, I mean, I walked through, I walked all the way around the entire building, looked at every window, I mean, I didn't. I just didn't see any signs that someone broke in that way. Um, so, other than those, probably seventy dollars worth of uh, tech, and you know, someone kind of trying to jimmy my door open. I had another Alexa sitting on my desk, so I think that's probably what they were going after. Um, but they weren't able to get the door open. So, um, should we should we change into locks? Yeah, we'll need to. Um, Yvonne has already deleted all of the codes for everyone um, to reset the codes. I mean, we, we we can tell that. We can track the entry codes, um, but we'll need to definitely change that that rear lock. Um, the front door has has a um, deadbolt, know, like a sunroom, but it's got deadbolts on it. So mm -hmm. no one was able to get through that one. The only the only door that makes sense is the is the uh, the ramp door. Um, so we'll need to get that change for sure. I wonder if the school has a camera on that door. So, like there, wasn't there motion cameras in there, but you thought maybe it was a, when the internet might have been down? There's a, so the cameras capture for 14 days. Um, and there, we, look, we looked back all the way to the, the 3rd of May. We didn't see anything, all the instances. It, it captures things like at nighttime when a when a car drives by and there's a glare in the glass, it will capture that. So it ca it's not actively recording. It captures incidences for about 60 seconds. Um, and, you know, we went back and looked at it to that point. We, we knew the camera was there on April 10th. Ellen Stanley had been there to teach a class. So we knew it. So we, we feel there's a window between the 11th of April and May 2nd, May 3rd, where that's probably the window. Um, but we don't have a back recording of when that could have happened. I mean, you know, if we're not, you know, no one's been in right. the building. So it's, you know, right. it's just one of those things that if you're not, you know, looking at every notice you get, because, you know, it could have been 11 o'clock at night and a car drives by, which is normally what it is, is a glare in the glass when you, when you look at those notices when they come through. So, um, you know, it could have happened during that time period. I mean, we have had several internet outages, which can affect things as well. I, mean, I know we had that big one just this past week, but um, we think it probably happened during that time frame. But um, yeah, we'll need to definitely change that lock on the back door, on the ramp door, and the uh, the codes are already disabled. Um, right now, Yvonne's code is the only one to get into the building. And to further that conversation, the at the school board meeting, um, they we're going to be they're going to be sending over a contract to extend the community center to december a lease the lease contract mm. and before you adjourn i did have that one item that we needed to talk about oh right remind me so angie was in the office oh yeah and there's i, I know she's been worried pretty badly about how these upcoming meetings are going to be handled with the DRB and specifically tractor supply and the large quantity of people that will want to participate. Sean happened to be here at the same time and he came up with basically a plan for a camera, um, which is, it's called owl camera, a TV, a stand, some cables, and basically all put together, it would really help to have the DRB members at the building, the OWL camera would capture all their faces because it's a 360 degree camera and it will allow the participants to at least see the DRB members without having to physically be in the building. And Sean can take it from there. He's more adept at that. Yeah, no, so whether it's DRB or select board, I mean, the looking at what a lot of other municipalities are doing, at least 
in the short term future here is, you know, they, they may be hosting in person for the board members, but the meetings are closed to the public. So the public has to attend, you know, via Zoom or whatever service they're using. Um, we have some, it's, it's possible for us to do something very similar, but we would need to invest a little bit in some tech in order to, to facilitate that. Um, so I, I did give Billy Joe kind of a breakdown of what I thought would work really well um, that would allow allow the meeting. So like the setup I, the setup I had tonight at the, um, at the uh, Merchant Services building was kind of an odd multi-camera thing because the, just standard webcams have a very narrow view. It doesn't capture a room very well. Um, so, and I know you guys typically like to sit around a table. So whether you're sitting around a table, like you typically do, or you're, you know, in a, you know, spread out six foot circle or whatever, whatever we may need to do here in the future. Um, this, this meeting out camera, it's something I have a little bit of experience with in the past that it captures the entire room, but it will capture each individual person. Um, so if they're sitting kind of in the circle around a table, um, it has an 18 foot microphone radius. That's usually the issue in capturing a room is you can capture the, the video of the room, but getting everyone's audio is sometimes a, an issue. Um, so this is a solution for that. Um, we looked at adding in uh, some form of television on a stand to be able to present materials, whether to the select board or the BRB, um, you know, some cabling, a, a tripod to set a camera if it's like in the middle of a room, like I, I was thinking emergency services, if it has to sit in the middle of the big room and then chairs around the camera, that's a possibility. Um, so th that was really the equipment that I was thinking. It's really, it's pretty modest for, I mean, it's not a big investment in, you know, my thought was you guys don't want to invest a whole bunch of money in getting tech to, to um, you know, outfit what your current situation is that maybe that's something you want to look at further down the road, especially once the armory um, potentially becomes a thing. So um, this is something that's pretty mobile as well that you can move around. Let's say you're done at the emergency services building and you want to just host, you know, your, your typical meetings in the um, town office, you can totally do that with this camera as well. It just plugs right into a laptop. You're good to go. I think it makes sense. I mean, by the sounds of it, we may be going through this again next year. So yeah. it better to be prepared than not. Yeah. It looks like a lot of the municipalities, especially, um, you know, I, I still pay atten somewhat attention to what Burlington and Winooski are doing. That looks to be the model that they're doing as well is, um, they're going to some form of in-person meetings, um, but it's just for the board members and then the public and any guests have to attend via Zoom or mm -hmm. you know, via video. Um, so having some form of presentation and a camera to capture that is important. Um, we were going to kind of make do with a makeshift, <laughs> a makeshift option this evening, but uh, the, the, owl, the owl camera will, will work really well for, I think what, because you guys, you don't have a typical you know, dais <laughs> that you sit on and where you can get, where you need a kind of a wide angle view, something like this would work pretty well. It's a, it's a pretty high end professional getting these small little um, webcams anymore is almost impossible. Anyway, you can't even get, you know, kind of middle of the road ones that um, might work for you guys to do just kind of a set it in a corner or set it up against a wall to capture the room. They're really difficult to come by. I did check with this company. They do have them in stock. They have about a seven to 10 day turnaround. Um, to get the camera. The camera was the only piece that I was concerned about getting, um, but that's um, the, I put in some cabling, just um, some 20 foot extensions, just some, someone would need to kind of sit uh, with a laptop off to the side. Uh, what we talked about is um, likely me uh, attending the meetings as kind of the moderator, similar to how I, similar to how I do now, just remotely. Um, but um, uh, sitting off to the side, um, total cost, including camera, television stands, some cabling tripod was fifteen fifty four. Um, I don't know if there's um, tax and shipping there, but um, that was rough. My rough estimate. I was pretty close in my estimate in the office too, Billy Joe. I think I yes, said. Yes, you were. I think I said fifteen hundred. You did. <laughs> so you need a motion on this? Yes. I'll move. I'll second. So we have a motion on the floor from uh, Pierre Letourneau and seconded by Polly Rico. 
to purchase equipment, to do Zoom, uh, to do uh, public meetings with cameras and have the public meet us through Zoom technology for 1554 or in our neighborhood. Any more discussion? If having none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I like that idea. Billy Joe, I can get with you to, uh, we can identify where we want to get some of the, and obviously the camera has to be ordered directly from Al. Um, but um, I priced the TV out at Costco um, because I, I had previously purchased one for conference rooms there before. So um, the TV, the TV stand, I think the rest of the stuff I priced off of Amazon. So if we can look at, um, I can send you the, the specifics of what I had priced out. I have an eye exam at Costco this week. So if you get that to me, I can pick it up. Sounds good. Great. Anything else? Um, did NJ or is, uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Angie, I heard from Rhonda McAllister today. She was asking about the fire, the emergency services building for maybe, I didn't completely understand it, maybe an overflow on childcare or something. She Did, called the office. Okay. And it was for the kids that were upwards of five years old. So it was five and up. And I said that I didn't think the emergency services building was a great option for her, for the kids that had to be there for that age, just because of the contact of the, the ambulance people could or would come in contact with the COVID people. Um, so I said, I she should contact, she should contact the school. I think that that was part of the, the deal. She was going to. Oh, she did. No, I don't know. If she did. She was going to, but I also, okay. said, you know, the opera house wasn't being used. If it was a temporary thing, maybe she could talk to Susie about that. Yeah. I agree with BJ on that, that it's the emergency services building wouldn't be a appropriate place for the kids. No. Yeah, I think it'd also, yeah, it'd be a lot more traffic in and out, and kids running around. It's, yeah, it's probably not the greatest idea, but there should be definitely some openings right now, some facilities. Has the armory people moved out of the armory? There's still trucks and it looks like things outside of the building, so I'm not sure that they're completely gone. If there's nobody in that building there, maybe, well, of course, there would be some safety issues looked into and stuff. Even though it ain't legally turned over to the town, there's space there. Just stop. Uh, Are you raising your hand, Sean? <laughs> um, I don't want to be rude. Uh, on the, you guys talked about it earlier, the uh, disinfectant fogger. Um, the Clorox 360, um, uh, Mark and I did complete a grant. Um, FEMA, the FEMA Firefighters Assistance Fund got a uh, $100 million um, extension for COVID related items. So we did um, apply for a grant for that oh. to, cover the, to cover the cost. So just to fill you guys in that that was accomplished. Awesome. Good, thank you. Great job. I don't have anything else on my agenda. Nope. I'll move. Second. The motion was made by Pierre and seconded by Polly to adjourn. Any discussion? Having none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Have a good evening, everyone. Enjoy the